Let's unfy. Suppose our sample's mean comes out to be here on the normal distribution. This tells us that the sample that we supposedly chose randomly is so far away from the population average. Now, is this acceptable or not? Who decides that? Is there a basis? We calculate the area under the curve till where our sample lies. So, in our case, we can say that there was a 4% chance that we got a sample which has an average of 59.9 ml or less. Despite such low probability, we just picked one such sample. So, maybe our initial assumption is incorrect. The normal distribution is not centered on 60 ml or maybe we just picked one bad sample by chance. Let me explain this better. Even when the machines are fine, that is, they are producing 60 ml bottles in the production line, do you agree that there is a chance that you end up picking a sample of shampoo bottles which has a mean volume of as low as 59.5 ml? Although this may be very remote, it is still a chance. Now, if the sample that you pick happens to have a mean volume of 59.5 ml, you can make one of the two inferences. One, that it was a remote chance and this one happened to be that. Or the other, that the machine is faulty and producing bottles which have far less volume than 60 ml. You need to decide this remotest of possibility cutoff. Let's say you fix it at 5%. Now what you have decided is that if you pick a sample which had less than 5% chances of getting picked up as per the normal curve, you will conclude that there is a problem with the production. It may be so that you have chanced upon such a sample, but you still choose to conclude that the machine is faulty. The small percent cutoff below which you will choose to conclude that it's not chance but that sample mean is actually different from the population mean is called alpha. So now to answer your question, the researcher decides it and it is done with the help of alpha. I am completely lost. How did you calculate area under the curve? How did you reach 4% probability, sir? <laughs> Yeah, so I just jumped the gun. What you do is calculate how many standard deviations is your sample mean away from the population mean. This is done by subtracting 60 ml from your sample's mean and then divide it by standard deviation. This tells you that your sample is 1.75 standard deviations away from the population mean. We compare this number with a standardized normal curve, which is also called Z-table. By looking at the table, we come to know that if we move 1.75 standard deviations to the left of the mean, we cover almost 96% of the area. That is, only 4% area remains to be covered. Okay, so that is when you say that there was just a 4% chance that we got a sample which has an average of 59.9 ml or less. Got it. I must say that the data dispersion has been very intelligently taken care of in the whole concept. If we decide alpha as 5%, then this sample mean is to the left of our acceptable limit. I am sorry, but what is acceptable limit? So if we decided that our significance level is 5%, it means that we are fine with picking a random sample of shampoo bottles which has a probability of 5 or more than 5% to get picked up. So if a sample has lesser than 5% probability of getting picked up and it is the one that we picked up, then we will conclude that our sample's average is actually less than the population average and therefore we need to take corrective measures. So, sir, are you saying that if the average volume came out to be way higher on right hand side of the curve, it would have been acceptable to us? Good question. Of course not. 
who wants to sell shampoo bottles which have much more shampoo than what the pack size is claiming so any sample that we pick if it lies in extreme right or extreme left of the normal distribution it's an issue 